What's good y'all? My name is Tristan and today I am here to share with you the stunning beauty that is Cappadocia. Cappadocia has to be one of the most interesting, unique places in the world. It has some of the most unique natural landscapes, underground cities, and incredibly rich history, which you can see right behind me in this 6th century church built right here into the side of a cliff. A place like this attracts hundreds if not thousands of travel content creators each year. And I've noticed these creators like to paint Cappadocia as this luxurious, lofty land of hot air balloons and horseback riding. Lost LeBlanc, a creator who I love, he's one of the most successful travel content creators, just released a video three days ago where he showed off his time here and his $750 a night hotel. But that picture is not necessarily an accurate picture of Cappadocia. The reality is, is that you can come here, experience everything, have an amazing time for a very affordable price. Matter of fact, in this video, I'm going to show you my four days here where I do pretty much everything that Lost LeBlanc did in his video, and I do it at a fraction of a price. We're talking less than 300 bucks. So if you want to visit this incredible place and do it all for $300, stay tuned. I'm going to show you everything I do here in Cappadocia. Now, before we get into the fun, I'd like to show you my humble home and $12 a night cave hotel. While it doesn't have a jacuzzi, fancy bathroom, or a window overlooking the city, it is comfortable and comes at an unbeatable price. I'd also like to mention that it is carved out of real cave, which is important because not all cave hotels in Cappadocia are actual caves. Many are built out of stone, designed to look like a cave, like part of this one here. All right, now let's get into the fun part. Made it packed into the hot air balloon. We're scooting. Oh, we have lift off. It's crazy to think that all of us are just like floating on hot air. All these beautiful balloons on the other side. A beautiful sunrise. That sky is absolutely incredible. And there's the crest of the sun poking out. We're coming up on Love Valley, which is where we're going to be hiking later today. And if you look at the formation of these rocks, it's not hard to guess how it's got its name. So our pilot just said that during the summer, during the busy months, there are up to 150 balloons in the sky. Today, probably closer to... I don't know, maybe 25, 30. I cannot believe this. This is so much better than I could have ever imagined. It's like kind of a freaking dream. So I just checked into my cave hotel and the first thing I want to do is get a dish famous to Cappadocia. Here it is. It is called a pottery kebab. Got it with rice, got it in a soup form, and also got it in little sandwiches. I'm having a real struggle figuring out how to eat this, but... <clears throat> I think that's right. I'm sitting next to two locals who told me that they are tour guides here. And they say this is how you eat it. Feels kind of weird. Now, while I'm showing you how cheap you can do Cappadocia for it, don't think that I'm necessarily being cheap. Frankly, I'm not traveling nearly as cheap as I usually. Usually I stay in hostels here. I have my own private room. Enjoying nicer meals like this. This was about eight US dollars, whereas you can get another, like a typical kebab for about two US dollars. Speaking of money, Here's a little tip on how to save someone visiting Cappadocia's many beautiful valleys. Whether it's Rose Valley, Love Valley, Cappadocia has over 15 incredible famous valleys. And there are many different ways to see these valleys. Two of the most common are by ATV or horseback. While both these options are a bunch of fun and provide an incredible experience, all the valleys of Cappadocia are relatively close to each other. So I spent a day hiking from valley to valley. It took me about seven hours and I saw nine valleys. I get this isn't meant for everyone, but I love hiking and enjoy getting to see these places at my own pace. An entire day of exploring completely free. All right, so I just walked by the old village of Chaushin and a lovely local right here. What's your name? Mehmet. Mehmet has offered to show me around this old church. There was an earthquake here in 1960. He said his grandfather used to live here and three people died in the earthquake. This is a monastery. This Mon is the monastery? Monastery. Big five. Big five. Wow. You can sure tell 
completely sheared. This is the problem with the earthquake, it's just in some areas the floor completely fell out. This has to be the most underrated, unexpected place. This was not even on my map to go to today. I just walked by it and I was like, that looks cool. Oh wow, this is sick. Check this out. We're walking on the edge. <laughs> You have an amazing voice, that's beautiful. <laughs> Wow. It looks like some people have modernized some rooms in here, kind of made a little the little hangout. That's something I sure would do if I was living here. All right, we have made it to the all too famous Love Valley. Wow, look at that love. Love is in the air. Good morning, y'all. It is the next day and we are currently in one of Cappadocia's famous underground cities. These crazy cities completely underground were started being built as early as 1000 BC. There's thought to be over 200 of these underground cities, however, only 36 of them have been excavated and only 10 are open to tourism. These are one of the things I was looking forward to the most when exploring Cappadocia. They are incredible, the detail is insane, and they are far bigger than I could ever imagine. The one that I'm in currently right now is six stories deep. Six different levels of living goes about 100 feet down, 30 meters down into the ground. So let's get into it because it is absolutely incredible. So my audio in this cave turned out complete garbage, so I've decided to do a quick voiceover. The first thing I noticed about these underground cities was how small the tunnels were. While the rooms were big and spacious, the tunnels between the rooms were only about belly button height. You had to crouch really low just to get through them. But this is not because the people who lived in them were small. The reason for this is so they could roll these big stones over the tunnel's entrance in case of invaders. This allowed them to hide out in different chambers. Additionally, I was stunned with the details these underground cities were built with. They had entire ventilation systems, candle holders, loops to tie up horses, places for them to eat, and much more. I saw these underground cities as part of the green tour. It cost me 40 US dollars and included lunch, transportation, pickup, entry into the underground cities, and covered several valleys and other areas in the southern part of Cappadocia. So in addition to everything you just saw, I did incur a couple other of expenses. For example, I went to the Green Open Air Museum, you know, food, snack, drinks, and all that in total was only $27, landing me just over $200 for three incredible days in Cappadocia. We really did all the major things to do there just to show Cappadocia is actually affordable. Now, real quick, I do want to put a disclaimer out, it might cost you more than what I spent when I went there. I was in Cappadocia, one, not in the busy summer season, and two, during COVID. So it just wasn't busy and prices were a bit lower. I also didn't go out, didn't have any alcohol when I was there, so that could, you know, bring the price up a bit. And the biggest thing that can really hurt your wallet if you go at the wrong or right time of year is the hot air balloon. I was lucky enough to pay $75 for a mid-sized basket. However, if you go in the peak season when, you know, all the balloons are going to be completely sold out, the prices jump exponentially. My hot air balloon pilot told me that prices go up to 350, 400, he's even seen 500 euros for a one hour flight. So if anything's going to burn your pocket, that's going to be it. You might want to try booking that early, but there's three days in Cappadocia for you for under 300 bucks. You could even go on a horseback ride and still keep it under 300 bucks. So yeah, hope you enjoyed this video guys. Hope you found it helpful. Peace out. Toodle doo. You have a good one. See you later.